Welcome to Lecture 18, Privacy of Medical Information. Most people consider their personal health information to be highly sensitive and deserving of the utmost privacy protection. This stems in part from the societal stigma that is associated with certain diseases and other physical and mental conditions. People also have a need for others not to treat them differently or discriminate against them because of their medical situations. The importance of the confidentiality of one's health information has long been recognized and is a foundation of the physician's Hippocratic Oath, which was developed around 400 BC. But in today's complex system of health care, many persons and organizations besides doctors have access to our medical records. And there is even more reason to be concerned about the privacy of medical information as the healthcare industry transitions from a paper-based system to an electronic medical record system. Electronic health records provide many benefits for better patient care, but they also increase the likelihood of unauthorized access and breaches of sensitive information. Information about our physical and mental health now ends up in vast databases and may be seen by hundreds of strangers who work in the healthcare system. Moreover, private medical information is now a valuable commodity for marketers who want to sell us services and products. Health privacy in the United States is governed by a host of different laws and regulations, both on the federal and state levels. Of course, the common law invasion of privacy torts may be implicated in the disclosure of medical information, and numerous states have enacted laws that specifically cover health care services that may not be covered by federal law, such as home health agencies, hospices, mobile health care units, acute psych psychiatric hospitals, and intermediate care facilities. The constitutional right to privacy has been extended to medical information. As early as Roe v. Wade in 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court acknowledged that the doctor-patient relationship is one which evokes constitutional rights of privacy. But the constitutional right of privacy afforded to information in medical records is not absolute and must be weighed against other legitimate interests. For example, in Whalen v. Rose, a group of physicians joined patients in a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of a New York statute that required physicians to report to state authorities the identities of patients receiving controlled substances. The physicians allege that such information was protected by the doctor-patient confidentiality obligations, and the patients allege that such disclosure was an invasion of their constitutional right of privacy. The court noted that the intimate nature of a patient's concern about his bodily ills and medications he takes are constitutionally protected. However, the court concluded that the law's requirement to disclose medical information to representatives of the state having responsibility for the health of the community, quote, does not automatically amount to an impermissible invasion of privacy, end of quote. More recently, in IMS Health, Inc. v. Sorrell, the Supreme Court, in a 6-3 to three decision, held that a Vermont state statute which barred the disclosure of prescription data for marketing purposes, impermissibly infringed on data mining firms' free speech rights. However, the court left the door open to a more narrowly drawn statute to address the privacy interests asserted by the state. This likely will continue to be an area ripe with litigation as states continue to attempt to safeguard the confidentiality of medical information. In 2012, Google announced a new web tool that will assist in detecting flu outbreaks before they otherwise might be reported. Google Flu Trends relies on individual search terms such as flu symptoms, 
used by Internet users. Although Google has said that it will only reveal aggregate data, there is no clear legal or technological privacy safeguards to prevent the disclosure of individual search histories concerning the flu or other medical concerns such as AIDS symptoms. In general, the principal privacy protection for health information in the U.S. has not come from the courts but through statutory enactment. Unfortunately, the statutory schemes for ensuring health information privacy are complex and somewhat fragmented. Some protections apply only to information held by government agencies. Some protections apply to specific groups such as federal employees or school children. And some protections apply only to specific medical conditions or types of information such as information related to HIV or substance abuse treatment. Recently, privacy concerns have centered around the rapid advances in the collection and use of genetic data. In October of 2012, a presidential commission for the study of bioethical issues recommended that the federal government enact, quote, a consistent floor of privacy protections covering whole genome sequence data regardless of how they were obtained, end of quote. Congress enacted the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, which protects individuals against discrimination in health coverage and employment based on their genetic information. In February of 2013, the U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments in a case which one of the justices called the most important criminal procedure case in decades. In Maryland v. King, the court will decide whether a Maryland law which allows DNA samples via cheek swabs to be taken without a warrant from those arrested but not convicted. In 1966, Congress enacted the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, known as HIPAA, which required the Department of Health and Human Services to promulgate rules to, one, facilitate the electronic exchange of, it, of health information, and two, establish a minimum set of national privacy safeguards, while at the same time allowing more protective state laws to continue in force. The HHS rules are somewhat dense and complex, and a detailed discussion will not be addressed here in this lecture. They also have been recently amended, effective in September of 2013. In brief, however, the HIPAA rules grant you a right to copy and correct your health records, require health providers to provide you upon request an accounting of who has accessed your records, and obligate health care providers to protect the privacy of your health information. Under HIPAA, you can also request a health provider to not share information with certain people, groups, or companies. From a practical perspective, however, your medical information is shared with many persons and organizations because you give consent to do so. Often, you have no real choice but to agree to this sharing if you want to obtain care or qualify for insurance. Under HIPAA, employers generally do not have access to your medical records or insurance claims because it could result in discrimination, something Congress wanted to avoid. Family members also need your permission to access your health information, although there are some exceptions to this general rule. Your health information generally cannot be used for marketing purposes under HIPAA unless you give permission or take part in free health screenings. This is why you should carefully review the privacy policies of your frequent shopper loyalty cards at pharmacies. HIPAA does allow your medical information to be used for research, however, your name may not be released. HIPAA also requires doctors, hospitals, and other health care providers to notify you if there has been a breach of your health information. Under HIPAA rules, encryption of information is encouraged, although not mandated in all circumstances. 
it's important to note that there is no private right of action for a breach of HIPAA's rules. But the Office for Civil Rights has aggressively brought administrative enforcement actions against violations, resulting in millions of dollars of fines being levied. The 2013 amendments to the rules increased the penalty for noncompliance to a maximum of $1.5 million per violation. All told, HHS has received more than 78,000 HIPAA complaints, which have resulted in corrective actions or fines being imposed in over 15,000 cases. In sum, the level of privacy protection afforded one's health information is akin to the extensive privacy protections one has in a home, although the former protection is principally statutorily based, while the protection of the home is grounded in the Constitution and judicial construction. This is the final lecture in our Information Privacy Law course. Thanks for watching. If you have ongoing interest in privacy or media law issues, follow me on Twitter at Media Law Guy.